less than 1% of NCAA women's basketball games are played at altitudes more than 5,000 feet above sea level. But this year, the most important games of the season will be held in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. To examine the possible physiological effects of competing in high altitude, I'm subjecting myself to an altitude simulation test here in the ESPN Sports Science Lab. Elevation, 750 feet. First, we establish my baselines. During strenuous exercise, the percentage of oxygen in my blood remains in the high 90s. After 20 minutes, we get measurements of my reaction time and grip strength. Now to mimic the conditions in Denver, we brought in a high altitude simulator. What we're doing is we're setting this to simulate an altitude of 5,600 feet, so a little bit higher than a mile. So the amount of oxygen you're gonna be receiving through the mask, which is the only way you can receive your oxygen, is going to simulate that environment. At an elevation of just under a mile, the air inside Denver's Pepsi Center is 18% less dense than the air at sea level, meaning each breath contains 18% less oxygen. At that elevation, hypoxia, or altitude sickness, can set in when the body's blood oxygen saturation level falls below 95%. Because my body is not acclimated to this altitude, just six minutes in, my blood oxygen level has plummeted to 86%. But as my body becomes acclimated, this number slowly rises. Oxygen is essential for a chemical reaction in the cells that produces energy. If red blood cells aren't getting enough oxygen, the body senses danger and compensates by steering oxygen to the vital organs rather than our extremities. My fingers are numb. Your fingers are numb? This is one reason why after 20 minutes of high altitude exposure, my grip strength decreases by more than 16%. And on average, my reaction times slow by more than 25%. However, studies have shown that for every minute of intense activity, two minutes of rest could offset high altitude's negative effects on performance by 30%, which means a lot of subs and proper pacing could be the key element in the women's final four. For ESPN Sports Science, I'm John Brinkus.